Laura Smith. Hey, Laura, it's Lucky. W- hey, I'm actually just sending you an email. I'm giving oh. you the, the rules um, that you requested. And I, first of all, let me apologize. I have had so many calls and emails. I believe I misread your um, very last sentence in your email. I missed a word. Okay. <laughs> um, so I apologize for that confusion. Um, I thought you were agreeing with us saying that it is illegal to operate them. And unfortunately, that is correct. <laughs> my my reading, my misreading of your email was correct. Um, what you wrote, however, um, didn't say that, and I do apologize for that. Uh, so I'm thoroughly confused here. <laughs> okay. Um, if you have an, a radio uh-huh. that is a multi-band or dual-band radio, that is one of the imports, and let's just go with Chinese imports off the top of my head um, uh-huh. for laughs and giggles. And, and it has been um, imported to operate in both amateur bands and, let's say, GMRS uh-huh. bands, which is what the bulk of these are. Right. And, but it has not been certified. Uh, then it is illegal for use period, because it has not been certified. So it is illegal to import it, to well, to manufacture it, to import it, to sell it, and actually to use it. And that is actually contained within the Act itself. And I'm giving you, I'm sending you an email with the site, and it's Section okay. 302 of the Communications Act. And it says very specifically that um, when the Commission enacted rules regarding certification, that applies to manufacture, import, sale, offer for sale, or shipment of such devices, and to the use of such devices. And that's the language that is problematic for the amateurs, because and to the use of such devices means, literally, you can't use it because it's illegal. Um, Now, I understand that amateurs have an exemption from certification requirements. And we did that because we encourage homebrew. And that has always been the case. Uh, the amateurs have always been permitted to build these devices, um, to uh, operate these devices. Um, but they can only do so, and they're only exempt from certification requirements, if, in fact, those devices only operate in the amateur radio bands. If they extend beyond operation in the amateur radio bands, they are to be type certified pursuant to the Act and um, the certification rules of the FCC. And the way that that applies to amateurs is Section 97.101 of the Amateur Radio Rules says that the amateurs are responsible for being in full compliance with all commission rules. And that doesn't just include Part 97. Unfortunately, that includes Part 2 of the rules, and those are the rules that deal with certification. So if you're uh, operating in or if you're building your own radio and you're building it to be multi-band capable, um, then you would actually have to submit it for certification, which is crazy but true, um, in bands outside the amateur radio bands because they have certification requirements for those bands. Here's where that doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> if it operates on amateur radio frequencies, it loses its certification. <laughs> so if I take a Part 95 uh, CB radio and modify it for 10-meter use, it's no longer Part 95 certified. For CB. Right. So it's because CB <laughs> radio uh, operators are not to be operating in amateur radio bands. Right. But, I but if you're an amateur and you, and you, and you do it, right. um, yeah. then uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit of different of a situation. The right, amateurs but, have more leeway than the CB operators. I understand your frustration because I'm going to take a wild guess and say you're a CB operator. No, no, I'm not. Okay, uh, well. But, but, but what I'm saying is I can take a CB radio. I'm an amateur operator, but I can take a CB radio, modify it for 10 meter use, and operate on 10 meters, right? So, but you're saying that if it, if the if it's capable of operating on frequencies say in Part 95, it would have to be Part 95 certified. Mm -hmm. As soon as I modify that uh, CB radio for 10 meter, it loses its certification. So that doesn't make any sense. Well, that means that as an amateur, you should be using radios that are only operating in amateur radio bands. Unfortunately, the rules don't make allowances for um, in other bands, don't make allowances for the amateurs' exemption for creating their or homebrewing their own radios. 
I mean, there's, uh, there's no mere <laughs> exemption. See, the problem that we have in the rules, and it's not a problem, it's actually the way the rules are written, is that there's no mere exemption, right? Um, Part 97 amateurs have an exemption from certification. There is no mere and there is no waiver for a Part 97 amateur to modify radios um, to operate in other bands while maintaining that they are op that they are still amateur radios. There is no exemption for that in the rules. And because there's no exemption in the rules for that, we have to read the rules literally. So and in this case, the rule literally says, and the Act itself, and the Act preempts everything, right? The Act actually preempts everything. The Act says you can't use the device if it's not certified. So any radio that's type certified and then modified by an amateur for use in the amateur bands is still is still capable of operating in the certified bands would then be illegal. So any re, any UHF VHF repeater that was once uh, GMRS or FRS or MERS and is now modified as a repeater in the amateur band is now illegal. If they have invalidated their certification in their original band, if it is a radio that is Part 90 certified and is being used also in the amateur band, um, the certification remains right. valid and yeah, they well, are permitted uh, to use them. Yeah, I understand Part 90, but it, it's troublesome when it comes to other certifications like Part 95 that specifically state if you modify the radio to go outside of the Part 95 band, you know, it loses its certification. Unfortunately, the rules are clear that <laughs> if you if you do it, I, I am I I am not making I, comments on whether or not I agree. I, I simply right. I, I I know this is aimed more towards the Chinese radios, but the way that that comes across is that applies to any radio that can go outside of the amateur bands if it's not a Part 90 radio. Um, well, there are radios that, that yes, <laughs> yeah, there's, no, there's no way of trying to mitigate what this review of the rules is, is saying publicly. Yes. Okay. I, mean, I apologize. <laughs> but, no, I, I'm, um, just, I'm just looking for clarification, and if that's the FCC stance, then it seems that it would apply outside of just these Chinese radios. Um, again, <laughs> I can only tell you what the rules state. Okay. <laughs> okay. And I, I apologize for um, misreading your original email. No, I, I, I appreciate your uh, your follow up and further clarification on that. Well, no, I, I'm getting emails and calls all day, every day. <laughs> so, um. Okay. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you, Laura. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.